Uh, November 23, question paper 1, 2, and uh, in the first video, we had question 1 to 33. From here, we only have a few questions left, 34 to 40. So we'll continue with the paper. Question number 34, which statements are correct? Uh, each chromosome contains one molecule of DNA. Yes, that's correct. You see this double-stranded DNA. This is one molecule of DNA. So this is ATGC. This is one molecule of DNA, which is made up of two strands. So get this right. One molecule of DNA, two strands. A gene is a section of DNA on a chromosome. Yes, the gene is from here to here. A section of DNA on a chromosome. So if this is a chromosome, then this gene is the gene for eye color or the gene for blood group or the gene for hair color. So one and two are correct. Why is this wrong? A gene contains smaller regions called alleles. No, allele is the alternative form of a gene. Blood group, you have three alleles, IO, IB, and IA. Three different alternative forms of a gene. So the answer is B, one and two only. Question number 35. I love these genetic questions, and uh, these are very challenging, and I think some of you find it very easy. Some of you find them a little difficult, but I will just give you a very simple way of doing that so it's easy for you. The diagram shows the inheritance of the allele capital E for polydactyly having extra fingers. So people who have polydactyly will either be this or will be this, which is dominant over the allele for no extra fingers. So without extra fingers, these people are small e small e so these people are small e small e now this is the one which is the clue which is going to help you so n has to be this these have to be this these have to be this all these have to be this all the people which are a clear square or a circle the circle signifies a female and the square signifies a male now it says, what are the genotypes of persons M and N? Now here is the interesting thing. You see, if M and N have a child, small e, small e, so that means this, this person, M, has to be this, big e, small e, because they have a child, small e, small e. So one e came from here, and one e came from here. So this is how you have to do this question. This is how you've got to do this question. So this person here has to be, this person here because has to have the dominant allele. So this person here has to be big E, small e, because the small e comes from here, from the mother. Now it says, what are the genotypes of person M and N? So the answer is C. You see, you must read the question carefully and see the ones which are recessive. The recessive trait is the one which is the key that you've got to understand. The people who are dominant can be this or can be this. But these are the ones, they only have one genotype. So that is the one which helps you to really find out the clue. So if you can read that from the question and then write it on this, uh, on this chart, which is called a pedigree chart. Question number 36. The flask was set up as shown at 35 degrees Celsius. Each flask has a balloon attached to the top. Contains water, yeast and sugar, water and sugar, water and yeast. The amount of inflation of each balloon was recorded after one hour. You realize yeast will respire and uh, produce carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide will enter and the balloon will become bigger and bigger and bigger. So what you had to understand was what is the correct order for the balloons from most to least inflated? Well, very simple. Very simple. Why is the answer A? You see, one would be most inflated. Why? Because it has water, yeast, and sugar. Then three. Why? Because it has water and yeast. And then two. This only has water and sugar. So why would it be the least inflated? So it says most to least because this says yeast, water, and sugar. 
Here it has water and yeast, so the yeast will respire. But here the sugar is a lot of respiratory substrate available for it. So one, then three, and then two. Water and sugar, no carbon dioxide will be produced. Question number 37, a tree has insect larva burrowing in its leaves. The emerging insects are eaten by birds. Tree, insect larvae, insects are eaten by birds. And the birds have fleas living amongst their feathers. So what do we have? We have tree. Then from the tree, the energy flows into insects. Then we have birds. And then we have fleas. So they've got lice. Fleas are lice. So they must be in hundreds. So the number will always be, the pyramid of number will have the largest bar at the top. Which pyramid is a pyramid of biomass and which pyramid is a pyramid of numbers for this food? So the tree biomass will be, of course, a very, uh, very, very big. Tree biomass will be very, very big. So pyramid of biomass will have to be because the number of fleas will be very little. So that would be two. And the pyramid of numbers. And the pyramid of numbers will be three. Why? Because this is tree. This is insect, this is birds, and then this is the fleas. So this would be the fleas. Fleas number will be much more. If there are 10 birds, there will be thousands of fleas in it. So that's why the answer is C. Pyramid of biomass, always the biomass of the producer is the biggest. And flea cannot have such a lot of mass. Flea mass will be very little. I mean, if, if you measure the mass of even a thousand lice, it will be less than a gram. So pyramid of biomass and pyramid of number, and they gave you this in the question that there is a tree. So in pyramid of numbers, it is a tree. So this would be the tree, this would be the insects, this would be the birds, and then this would be the fleas. The fleas would be, of course, much, much more than the number of birds because it's a pyramid of numbers. Then question number 38, the fossil fuels used as energy sources today developed from animal and plant remains buried millions of years ago. So if tree remained buried millions of years ago, or an animal remained buried for millions of years ago, what was the initial source of energy in these fossil fuels? Whether they were animals or whether they were trees, it's sunlight absorbed by the producers and then the consumers are the ones which have eaten them. Deer eats grass. And uh, lion eats the deer. So basically it's light energy to chemical energy in the producer. So the initial source of energy in these dead animals and plants is actually photosynthesis. All goes back to photosynthesis. A tree photosynthesizes, grows, huge size, 100 feet tall and it is buried for millions of years. A dinosaur is buried for millions of years, becomes fossil fuel. Where did the dinosaur get its food? From the producer. So all these fossil fuels actually go back to photosynthesis. Then coming to question number 39. Which term describes the number of different species that live in an area? So that is biodiversity. The number of different species. Number of different trees, number of different birds, number of different uh, insects, number of different bushes, number of different herbs, number of different plants. That's biodiversity. Last question, question number 40. If high levels of nitrates are washed into rivers, the following changes may occur causing fish to die. That's called eutrophication. So increased growth of algae or single cell water plants make the water green. Then water plants die and fall to the bottom. Then bacteria multiply rapidly. The bacteria which were 10 million will now become 100 million. They will use up the oxygen in the water and the fish will start to die. They have said the fish to die, but they're saying what is the so concentration of oxygen in the water decreases. Why? Because bacteria respire aerobically and use up the oxygen. Please remember, it's the bacteria which increase in number from 
10 million they go to 100 million or go to trillions i'm sorry i don't know the difference between millions and trillions i'm very truthful about things i don't know i wish you all would be honest and truthful about things you all don't know as well honesty is the best policy so answer is d four Increased growth of single cell water plants make the water green. One, water plants die and fall to the bottom. Bacteria multiply rapidly because now there's a lot of dead organic matter. And this will result in the concentration of oxygen in the water decreasing because the bacterial number is now so much that they are aerobically respiring and using up the oxygen in the water. That completes this uh, paper. Thank you very much.